What's that stuff? That's a real thing. That's a real person. That's a real person. Here, go right here. Go right talk. Here. An open? Yeah. An opening? But. <laughs> 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 Hi. <laughs> welcome to Union Station. And welcome to this episode of Crowd Surfing Utah. I'm Braden. I'm Farrell. We're pretty sure something weird's going and on right here. Braden's scared to death. Dude, it's not even real. We are in Union Station right now. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> All right. So we're here. So wait, paranormal <laughs> tour. Paranormal tour. Let's paranormal tour. Paranormal tourists. Wall Street. Sorry, I was just showcasing my friend. Yes. So because I'm scared of paranormal let's, tourists. Let's, let's walk around and see if we can find anything paranormal. Alrighty, I am here with Tracy, the, the world famous Tracy of Union Station, is that? That's right, that's me. <laughs> so what's going on here tonight? Tonight we're having our Night at the Museum Paranormal Tours, like every October. And we added this year the Haunted Market. Oh, I was going to say, because in, in the past you've never had like vendors or anything in here, you've just had like the paranormal teams is all. That's right, and it was getting a little boring in the lobby, frankly. So we decided to make it a little more fun. It's a free party. Everybody should come to it. So you can shop while you're waiting for your tour, and then after your tour, you can shop some more. That's right. Or shop and just hang out. Yeah. I've stumbled upon something. Wait a minute. Look at this one, Brave. No, that's that. I think I might have found something better. All right. <laughs> what? You look like you're like. <laughs> Can I get your name? My name is Allie Jones. And what is it that you're doing down here tonight? I am helping with the paranormal history booth um, with Nick Berg over there. I'm a part of the paranormal investigations team of Utah, and we're doing tours as well. Oh, you're still behind me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh. So if you, if you wanted to come in and just shop and just hang out here, you don't necessarily have to buy a ticket. It's if you want to go on the actual tour, right? Right. That's right. But there's a, there is a drawing. So maybe if you didn't get a ticket, you still could come down and win a, uh, like a private tour later on. Oh, really? So like just you and maybe some paranormal investigators? and Yeah, the PI team of Utah, PITU, Jenny Wright. They oh, I know her. I know you guys know her. You, she's a famous one. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's donating her to two tours. Oh, really? Yeah. She's nice? so nice. She well, really to everybody but me. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I stole a hat, but just for temporarily. What is your name? It's Deborah. And yours? I'm Witchy Poo. Witchy Poo and Deborah. What is going on here, and why are you guys so talented, and what are you making? We're making witch hats. Everybody needs a witch hat. It's that time of year. Mm -hmm. So how did you get started? Uh, we started coming down to witch stock and we'd make our costumes and we'd win all the contests. And then uh, we started helping people make their hats and then they started winning. So we decided there might be something to it, making witch hats. So that's what we do. So what is it? that attracts you to the paranormal? What makes you want to go investigate? Um, first off, I think it's really the history that kind of drags me in and then I really want to go in and see if the history of it has affected it at all and then if I can get those two things to coincide, it's, it's very interesting. So have you ever like experienced anything that's odd or something you can't explain? Because I know, I know most investigators don't say, oh yeah, that's a ghost automatically. Oh, yeah, no. they'll, they'll be like, I'm really not sure what that is. Have you ever anything that you like have no clue? 
Um, yeah, a lot of the paranormal investigation team in Utah, what we do is automatic. We try to debunk as much as we can. So if we do find something, it's it's very, very interesting. <laughs> What's the matter, bro? Oh. Oh, Look. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a hard time with these scary shows. Have you, because you've been here a long time, I've asked everybody this, you, you've been around Union Station for a long time. Mm -hmm. Anything odd or unexplained ever happen? Yes. Well, I got poked in the back the other day in my office. And just the other day? Yeah, just like three weeks ago. Right over there? Right over there. Who did it? Yehudi. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about Yehudi. How could you forget? I don't know. He's our most famous ghost. Yes, yes, Yehudi. I remember Yehudi. See, I remember that one thing. All righty, Tracy, well, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate your time. You're totally welcome. Thanks. We have a witch potion that we put on our hats to stiffen them. Oh. And so, you know, it's something that we've come up with, concocted, and, and so we don't let that secret out because that's our witch spell stuff. I love this. I need another like a witchy. Um, I need a. I need a witchy girl. How about you? Come here. I'll be a witchy. Girl. Yes, and just tell everyone at home your name. Hi, I'm Shawnee. But you have to say it into your microphone. You do. Oh, there I'm you go. I'm Shawnee. Cool. And then you share that with her. Okay. And so here. that will, when we ask them amazing questions, we'll, we're going to hear all the answers. So I've had um, a couple things happen here, and it's been. Um, a lot of necklace play, so like I have necklaces that the little kids seem to love. Um, there's been shadow play. The, the little kids, as in like like dead little kids. Yes, little kids. Yes, yes. We believe there's a, um, a couple of spirits here. One um, that's possibly um, a little girl named Frances that we're going to talk about on the tour tonight. Um, we believe that we've contacted her a couple times and um, she's very active in the vaults and so we believe that she's kind of likes to tug and play with jewelry and different things. So. All right, boys. Here's the here's the rules. Well, all right. Girlfriend, so, you and me. Okay. So when you need this, and then boys, you too. Deal. Cool. I'm scared. Me too, girl. That's why we have to be together. Your face looks so good. This is your investigation. This is your tour. This is your um, your gig. So I want you guys to have a great time. Okay. We are going to take you to the places around the Union Station. We're going to talk about history and paranormal stuff. So the equipment that you are using, this one is going to turn into more lights. Something is close to it, it gets closer to it, it will turn into more lights. When you move the equipment around like this, it's going to create its own field, so just read it when you're holding it. Okay? Same for the black box, it's just going to increase in numbers, but while you're moving it will increase, it will change, so you just need to make sure that you read it when you're still. Okay? Anybody who wants to take photos along the way? You're more than welcome, yes. So this hat, this is a style that you guys make. It's not your large hat. Is this for like a junior witch? No, it's just for anyone that doesn't want a great big hat but wants to have a, a witch hat. Would you say this has like a third of the magic? I would say it's probably a third. Yeah, a third of the magic yeah. would be, be good, yeah. All right. So that's super cute. Of course, TV and everything makes stuff seem hokey as it can be. Mm -hmm. um, but what are your thoughts on stuff like, like for instance, everybody's like, oh, I'm scared of Ouija boards, and Ouija boards do this. And, you, I mean, you can, Parker Brothers makes Ouija boards. I mean, seriously, how can a piece of wood summon Satan? Mm -hmm. See, and we don't play with anything like that. With That's not really our field. We have people um, that we, you know, coordinate with that are into things like that, that do know how they work and such. But I've never used one. Um, I'm, I've got friends that have stories that, from things that have happened with them. But, yeah, but Parker I, Brothers makes them. I mean, how, how, how I mean... You know. Corporations are evil, there's no doubt, but That's how satanic... True. I don't know if something like that comes through the board from the corporations or what goes on, but I think it's that, so... All right, so taking pictures is okay. If we're in a dark place and you want to take a picture, you do need to say flash, though, so that I can pose. Can I add two for the 930? We're currently at 15. Sorry, I'm in charge. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, so flashlights. If you have them, you need to use them because there are some spots where it's dark and you need to make sure you don't bonk your noggins and stuff. So use them if you have them. We're going to go right this way, okay? I've never heard that before. She encouraged us to use Should I use my thing? Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Okay, do you want me to? Yeah, don't do leave it. me though. What is your favorite style? Oh, I like to, I, I like to do the scary ones with the hands and the skulls the and the spiders yeah. and the That's glitter <laughs> I, li I like the light up one over here yes. which I don't remember which one it was the but yep. right yep. 
The cheetah one. Yeah, yep, that's cheetah. what it is. So where is your favorite place you've ever been in your whole time of investigating? Where is your favorite place you've ever been? Um, I'm not going to say it just because I'm here, but it is the Union Station. Uh -huh. I trained here, um, started as an investigator almost five years ago now, and every, th every time you're here, something happens. So Pretty cool building, though, I mean. Architecturally, it's beautiful, the history is amazing, and it's always very active. And there's a ghost that's going to jump out. I, I, every Christmas I ask for, you know, a full body apparition to appear. Oh, but see, I thought it was going to ask for Christmas spirit. Oh, no. Oh, see? Christmas see how I did that? Oh, no. Oh. No, I want a full body apparition for Christmas this year. So if you can, you know, get that to me, that would be fantastic. But I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to the ghost and see, you know. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the original scale. They've not changed it out. It is what it is. So the baggage area was, has always been in this place. Of course, it was you know, different then, had a lot more room, but go ahead and step on it. Just do it. Do it harder. Come on, dude. Step on it. Okay, there you go. I know. Oh, it's a scale. Okay. Make that thing so you can see that it is still working, which is really kind of cool. Okay? Does it ever do that by itself? You know, actually, you can. Actually, um, we have had that happen once or twice where the scale will um, do things where it shouldn't. I actually was here earlier today. We were filming uh, something different and we heard, I heard the scale because it makes a very distinctive sound. Right. Yeah, and so we came over here and I was checking there was nobody here. So that was interesting for me. We start uh, cutting the fabric and sewing them in about March and sew most of the summer. And then in August, we put our witch um, potion on them and start stiffening them and decorating them so that we're ready for September. And do you have a website that people can go to or do they have to see you in person? We don't have a website. We just do it out of our home. I love this story. And we just, um, you can call us at our homes and we can make something for you if you want. You can custom make it. Yes. Um, we like to do that before the last week though of October because we're usually pretty busy then. All right, can I get your name? Don. Gordon. And what is it that you guys are doing down here tonight? So we're just offering ghost tours and investigations of the Union Station, um, letting people see places that they don't normally get to see. Like downstairs and uh, the, where the vaults are and stuff like that? Vaults, um, some other rooms upstairs, out in the trains and stuff like that. So what, are you guys part of a, a paranormal team actually? Yeah, we're part of the uh, Utah Paranormal Oh, you don't know the name. I thought this was the man, and he has do the, uh, yeah. the moment. The camera, Mike, uh, Paranormal Investigation Team of Utah. There we go. The Paranormal Investigation Team of Utah. I'm going to tell you a story. In 1913, um, one of the gentlemen who was a baggage um, officer was in charge of taking bags from here and putting them onto the train. His name is William Frost. So one day, he's picking up bags, and he's taking it to the train, and he's like, oh, mm-mm. This one does not smell good. There's something wrong with this bag. So he takes it back to the baggage area and he calls Master Sergeant Shields. Says, sir, there is something wrong with this bag. It does not smell right. He says, yeah, there is something wrong with it. Look at the hair sticking out. So they called the police and they ordered it open. They popped it open. Body of a 10 year old little girl. That ain't right. Her name was Frances Williams. <laughs> 10, year old, 10 years old, she was covered with blankets and a pillow over her face, so she was kind of buried. And um, the problem was that her mother was in a relationship with a man who apparently doesn't love children, and her relationship with the gentleman was more important than the relationship with her child, so she resolved it that way. So after the busy season is done, do you take like a witchcation and like go somewhere? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we get on our broom and we fly away. That's what I was imagining. Oh gosh, it must be really, really fun. Hopefully one day I can, uh, you know, get up there. I, I thought maybe this was for me, but there's so many different styles that you have. Um, can you please remind us again of the name of your company? Um, we're the witch gals. Just the witch gals. And they make these witchy hats. And we are at Union Station and I'm obsessed with all of them. How long have you been uh, affiliated with this group? About four or five years. Oh, really? So have you guys investigated Union Station at all? Yeah, this is probably my fourth or fifth time. Anything, anything interesting happen? I've been touched a few times. Really? By this guy or? No. <laughs> No, not him. Oh, okay. So those of you with equipment, are you having any readings right now? Sometimes what will happen 
I have a reading. About Francis. I have a reading in my brain. That's, oh my God. It, it's crazy, it's so yeah. Sad. And it is sad, but sometimes when we talk about Francis, our equipment will go off. We do get childlike activity in here. So as far as the paranormal stuff, we hear footsteps, we hear running, we have little tugs on her clothes sometimes, kind of like she's just getting our attention. Okay, so when you use your phones, that will set it off because of the data stuff. So just be careful when you're reading those, those, the equipment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna invite Frances to come and play with us and see if she wants to contact us later down, come and play with us later down the line, okay? All right, let's go this way. Come on, Frances. Did she just, she just in yeah, sent out an invitation? Yeah, don't be scared. It's a child for crying out loud. All right, just inviting somebody genuinely freaks me out a little bit. It's like an open invitation. Big you don't need yeah, exactly. a 10 year old girl, bro. You can take <laughs> She probably has a shank. She's probably mad. I'd be mad if someone stuffed me in a bag. But your Achilles? <laughs> How many 10 year old girls carry shanks? <laughs> dead ones? <laughs> Most dead ones, I think. Most dead ones do. Did you find one that was like good for you? Oh, yeah. Yep. The cheetah hat with the spider on it. It like spokes you? Cool. Yeah. Do you want it? Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Let's. My hair is messy. Because when a witchy hat calls your name, you have to abide. I'm going to put this gracefully back on its little... My witchiness is really tall. Oh. Is it straight? Yes, and it lights up. And this was the witchy one I liked. fabulous? Yeah. Witch is different. Witch. <laughs> yeah. That's clever. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, oh my gosh, that is good. so you. We do look Can good. Tip it up a little bit so you can see. Oh, yeah. Right? There you go. So what, what about you? Have you had any interesting things? Um, I've had some doors sounds shut, like where people aren't, you know, no one's at, and you hear a door shut and a click, um, stuff like that, um, just noises. But nothing like super crazy, right? No, nothing. I always, I've said this before, I always thought if I was going to do, like, paranormal investigations, I'd want something just to jump out at me and say, hey, here I am for I'm a ghost. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to come up, hey, I'm a ghost. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. It would, it would sure take a lot of your, you'd have a lot of time left at the end of the night to go do something else, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. <laughs> Exactly. This is a really incredible uh, building. You've never been here before? This place is awesome. I've never been here before. Look at all of this. I'm genuinely weirded out right now. Like she invited Francis like to come back. Yeah. Oh, I know. I was freaking out trying to hold still. There's children up on the stage. Oh, I feel weird. Yeah. I'm kind of, kind of weirded out. Oh, something just grabbed that out of my pocket. <laughs> I'm Amy. I'm Shawnee. And I'm Deborah. And I'm Witchy Poo. We are <laughs> witching it through the Halloween season. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. I have one question I want to ask. Oh, okay. We've Just been one. interrupted by this. Yeah. One question. Can I hear you guys cackle? Because everybody knows witches <laughs> cackle, right? Yeah. You have, yeah. A, you have a witch All right, cackle? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> I like this. This is good. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for talking. Um, oh, wait. You know what? I got a question. You guys, you guys got any dirt on on Jen? Like, has she ever like fallen down or done something? And you're like, oh man, I can't wait to tell everybody she did this. No, I don't think so. I was, she swears a lot, but why? Oh, I know that. I mean, that that's a yeah. Is, is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it swears a lot. She got like a truck driver with Tourette syndrome. <laughs> oh my God. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate your time. Welcome to the Browning Theater. So the Browning Theater was originally used for a mail sorting. Um, it was actually a very productive mail sorting station. So what would happen is the trains would come in over here, they would drop off mail, they would bring it in here, they would sort it, and then it would be sent out to the public. So it was actually very, very productive and the largest in the state. <clears throat> These days they use it for things like weddings, presentations, they have the zombie prom here. Um, so they do a lot of different things in this room. Um, and I do want to get rid of the rumor that it was a morgue. We used to tell people that it may have been a temporary morgue. That is not true. Um, it actually was down at the DDO where that happened, but there may have been some times where bodies were brought here for, you know, you know, delivery to places like home. In the mail? In the mail, yeah. yeah. Put a stamp on them. All right. All right, can I get your name? Jennifer Buckley. I'm Sierra Corrales. And what is it you guys are doing down here today? I am selling my creepy dolls. Yeah, well, I was going to say, what is it with 
creepy dolls. I love my creepy dolls. <laughs> you have a really good dentist. I'm not going to ask you too many questions because I know you had that surgery to like lock your jaw shut while it heals. And it's, it would be super rude for me to talk to you. So we're just going to ask you yes and no questions. Um, are you pleased with how Miley Cyrus has changed her image, like, again? No. Oh, he speaks. Your turn. We're just uh, going to rapid fire you, questions. Yeah, yeah, you, you kind of freak me out. Who does your hair? Give a shout out, like, share and subscribe. Happy hair by Sarah. Happy hair by Sarah. Yeah, 25th Street, Ogden. Lordy. Go for it. I want to tell you of a man that they call Yahoody. Don't ask me where that name came from because I have no knowledge as to how that came about. But there's a theory that I have, and I'm going to tell you the story and why I think that. So in the 1800s, there was a man named John Ross. And he was in love with a lady named Glenna Carter. She was a lady of the night. So her street name was Mamie. And he followed her down to the station one day and saw her meeting another gentleman on the train. He was coming off the train, she was picking him up, they were gonna go hang out. Well, and this is just how it goes in my mind because I don't know what the real conversation was, but I think he says something like, hey, what are you doing with that other guy? I love you. And she says, I'm sorry, John, I don't love you. I have no idea where you're getting this information that we're a couple. Okay, perfect. If we're talking about you, John, I appreciate you acknowledging that. So then, John says, well, I don't like that and I'm not happy, so, I'm going to shoot you. So he takes out a gun and aims it, and she starts running down the platform that way. So she takes off down that way. He shoots her in the back and then goes around the rail car and shoots himself. Aww. My feeling is that it's possible that this man is John Ross. The gentleman they call Yahoody. Please touch that green light if I'm right. Are you John? Are you Mr. Ross? Can you touch that green light? Make it go to yellow for me, please. Okay, thank you. What is the inspiration for... He's alone at home too often. Is that what it is? No, no, no. No, I it's used not, to... Maybe not often enough. I used to work at the original Rocky Point when I was younger. In fact, that's where me and my husband met. We're Halloween. You know, Halloween is a lifestyle, not a holiday. Yes, people, lo people love Halloween. Can you explain why that is? They were married inside of Rocky Point. Oh, really? Yes. Good Lord, I mean, I don't even like Christmas that much. No, and people my, love Halloween. My Christmas is a black Christmas tree with Halloween ornaments. Yes. Is it really? Yes, it is. Oh, my house looks like this all the time. <laughs> Do you ever, are, are people ever like concerned? Yeah, but we don't care. We don't care. <laughs> They're always concerned. They tell me how sick and twisted I am all the time. And you're like, I know, so what's the problem? Right? Yeah. Are there real spirits in here? Yes. Have you seen any? Yes. Besides yourself. Maybe. Are you akin to a certain one? No. You like them all? Yes. Across the room, underneath those windows, we oftentimes will see shadow cross. Up here, we often hear children running around and playing. We've actually caught an audible giggle, which means we hear it with our own ears. Now, a lot of our crew or people who have investigated, or even people just like you, I'm sorry, have taken pictures up here on the stage. And over here on this area where Farrell is right now, back in that area, people feel very, very uncomfortable. And they've actually caught a shadow in their pictures right back there. So, because it seems to me, Bill mentioned this to me, it seems to me like dolls are starting to go the way of clowns. Remember when clowns were like happy and now they're creepy? Everybody's scared of them. Are they doing the same thing with dolls now? Maybe you're the originator of that. I could be. I started about um, 10 years ago for my own house outside for Halloween, and then people started coming to me wanting to buy them, and now I see them everywhere. So, um, <laughs> you, you like sold the outfits and everything for them? Or? I make a lot of the outfits, yes. So what do you like? Them. You like hit the thrift shops for, for dolls and then rework them? Or? Thrift shops, antique stores. Really? Some people donate them because they can't handle to have them in their homes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, especially after you're done with them. Oh, and then I make them even better. <laughs> so, so do you help with these? No, I don't. I come for the support. You know what it is? I support, yeah. I, I have a serious question. Just remember his jaw is so shiny. Oh, okay. Do you, do you, I'll, I'll borrow Amy for a minute. Do you like, um, 
randomly walk around and just scare people on the ghost tours? Yes. Ah, oh, man, I would do that in a second. I don't want to jump the gun, but it looks like you could be about a foot <laughs> taller if you had that on. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Brayden Corny <laughs> joke hour. Uh, okay, that's all I was wondering. If I get scared by them, I gotta at least make fun of them, right? Uh, you have to. Hey, hold on a minute. Oh. <laughs> I have such a I'm out here. You, you enjoy. Ones. What are you? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> he just follows Braden around. Oh. Back when we're behind the stage, sometimes we have movement back there, and we often see a shadow that goes from right to left and comes up those stage stairs. So it is possible that maybe somebody is over there. So where is my equipment again? Okay, right here. So, right there. okay, awesome. Okay, you're getting yes and no's, perfect. So guys, if there's anyone here right now, any of the kids that maybe want to come and let us know that you're here, do you want to come and play with us? If you can come and touch the green light for me, I'd appreciate it. You know we love to play games, so just come on over and talk to us. Play play game by touching the green light and running away. It'll be fun. Green around the road. That's right. <laughs> no. Oh, that like, tripped oh. me out. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's interesting about the ring around the roses, the roses thing, sometimes when we do recordings, we will start singing the song and we'll stop singing it and see if they finish it. So if anybody is recording, they may hear the rest of that ring around the roses. Right. We do that quite frequently to see if the kids want to oh. do things. I may have inspired. I, I was just going to say, don't be mean, but you kind of look like a creepy doll right now. Your eyes and your tattoo. I came to hopefully scare some people. It yeah. <laughs> it's we, working. We raised them well. Yeah, we exactly. We them young. Once they're born, they're in the haunted houses and everything. Yeah, the haunted houses, Halloween, scaring people, just for fun, just running around the neighborhood. I love it. That's great. So Some babies are running around here somewhere. They're not even. They're not even phased, huh? No, they love it. Yeah. See, I'm. I'm walking around here. I'm kind of doing this number. They go through the haunted houses and they're laughing, and you see other kids screaming, and my kids are running around laughing. <laughs> what is it? So this is a plasma ball. We use it on investigations. Oh, you do. We have. Yeah, we have the spirits manipulated it. Um, at Camp Floyd, we actually had it work. I waited and waited and waited for it to work, and we had something that was pulling all the energy. It was just like going in a straight line down onto the bottom, and you could see it touching like that, but there was nothing else up here. It was kind of the coolest thing we ever had happen. What is your name, and what is your jam here? So, my name's Lydia, and I'm the founder of MNL Paranormal Investigations. Okay, be careful on the stairs when you're coming down, guys. I'm genuinely weirded out right now. <laughs> okay, right through here, please. Hey, wait, I just heard a voice. Hello? I just heard a man's voice right here. Okay. I love how you just, hey, I heard someone. Hello? Watch this right here. Well, because I don't really have time to sit and stand, but I heard a voice. Well, I don't, I'm not doubting you. I'm just... <laughs> Like, how are you so calling Your set of cojones, sir. It happens around here. That's what happens when we try uh, document it. So yeah, yeah. We're going to stop right here, chat a little bit. Maybe. I can't look at her eyes. It trips me out. So, <laughs> do you guys, yeah, it's, it's really odd to me. I mean, no offense, you're a lovely woman, but I just can't look at you. Um, <laughs> do you have like a website or a Facebook or anything or a way someone can get a hold of you? I am on Facebook. I'm the uh, DJ Crafts, the other dolls, and other Halloween type props and decorations. So you you request too. If you just like this creepy thing that you just don't want to create yourself, because <laughs> either you're scared or you just don't want to do that, you send it over to her. This is the woman she will it. create it. So I was just gonna say, do you do just dolls or do you other do other props? What else do you do? I do other stuff. I have jewelry. Um, I do costumes. I used to make my kids as costumes. I do potion bottles. Um, we do things like we have a bat over there, some snake skin, some witches stuff. And All right, very good. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so where is MNL uh, based out of and what do you do? We're actually based out of West Valley. Well, I live in West Valley, but we're all through, through the Salt Lake Valley. Um, we do do events where we have people come out with us and do public investigations. We teach you how to use the equipment, how to investigate. And then we do residentials as well. We kind of help homeowners 
with their issues. Right, which I'm sure a lot of that kind of stuff pops up, especially around here. There's, I feel like there's so much history. And the month of October, it's like everything goes crazy. The veil is like... Yeah, it's like the veil's really thin because every October, on top of events, we're getting calls constantly, hey, we're having issues. We got stuff going on. So it's just, and in Utah, yeah, there's a lot of it. We probably get one residential a month, one or two. Okay, guys, we're going into the basement now. The stairs are kind of treacherous, so I want you to be careful. There is no handrail. You need to take it slow, be careful, take your time. Use your flashlights. Pass it down and take care of each other. <laughs> oh, this is creeps. Do you Hold just up. sit down here by yourself? Yeah. This is I, Allie. She's one of my teammates and she's the director of social media for me. Yeah. Allie, you're not scared? Hey. No, I've been down here since about down. seven. So, what? Yeah. That's quite a, a gig. It's been really relaxing. And then you just take yeah, us. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being nosy. No, you're fine. No, I've just been kind of having a conversation. I heard whistling earlier, and then the elevator did ding, did it? too, and it wasn't the door because it makes a different sound. Right. All right, guys, so this is the basement, and it is the original basement. So when everything was built in 1889 and all the expansion, this was part of that building, okay? In 1928... A fire did happen here at the Union Station. That giant clock tower I told you about, because of the fire, it ended up falling and causing lots of damage to the station. As they were in the construction mode of trying to clean all that up, one of the gentlemen who was a ticket taker was doing his job, and a 250-pound stone fell on him and crushed him to death. His name was Frank Yenser, and we do believe that Frank is still with us today down here. So I just got remember. Remember, yes sir, we are trying to remember you. We've already had some interaction with Frank tonight. Um, we've actually, through K2, um, so Frank, sir, are you here with us? Can you touch the green light one more time for me just to say hello to these folks? Can you do one for yes and two for no? All right, can I get your name? Yeah, I'm Nick Berg. And Nick, what is it that you're doing down here at Union Station today? So I am down here volunteering, uh, helping to run the history booth for the Ogden Union Station, uh, where we discuss the history of the Ogden Union Station, and we help people answer questions. Okay, can we redo that? <laughs> yeah, go over again. Start again. Okay. <laughs> don't, funny. don't cut that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can do a bloopers reel. All right, okay, go. okay. Okay, ready? So what I do when I go into a home, I, my goal is never to go in and tell someone your house is haunted. You can't, yeah. That's not my goal is to go in and say, oh, you have ghosts here, you have ghosts here. So if they say, I hear a creaking, like someone's walking, I will try everything I can to come up with a logical explanation for it. Right. So a lot of the times when we go in, there's not anything there. It's just like the heater or a floorboard that's loose or one house we went into. Her son said his door handle would jiggle and his door would move. We were in there and it happened. We're like, whoa, what was that? But we heard someone close the door. Like, what did you guys do down there? Anytime they closed the door in the front room, it would get his door and it would shake. So I'm like, okay, well, there, we didn't find anything at that house, but we always try to go in and not. But if we do... I mean, we have ways to, to take care of it. We try to help spirits cross over. If they don't cross, we let the homeowners. We have a couple of options. It's not crossing. You can either let it stay here and we can help you to work and, and coexist with it. Right. Or we can cleanse your house and get rid of it. And that's kind of a last resort because I don't like to make a spirit homeless. Please, sir, if there's any way that you can just say hello to us. I know that you've had a lot of visitors. Excuse me. There's one, yes. Okay. So, Thank you. this said remember. So, a lot of times when you start talking about the past and something that they're aware of or something that they were part of or that they still feel like is going on, they will interact with us. So, again, Frank, is that you, sir? Can you touch the green light to let us know that you are here? Did Frank work here? Would yes, he was the ticket taker he that was killed. He was the ticket killed. taker, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so he was... Here too for now. 
He was actually an immigrant, and he left behind a wife and two children. Um, so I just got pain. Okay, that just... He's in pain. Okay, we got that. Sir, are you really... Are, is that you touching that device? Can you... I just got a yes. Okay, can you turn that to yellow for me, please? Just touch it long enough for it to go to yellow. You got what, Ellie? Pain. Are you in pain, sir? I hope that it's not painful for yes. you where you are. Yes. Oh, no. I don't like that. So I'm down here today to uh, help run the history booth for the event here at Night at the Museum where we discuss the history of Ogden's Union Station and we answer questions to anybody that's here on the tours tonight. Um, just if they have questions about the history of the museum, the building, and some of the folks who worked and or uh, died here. So maybe kind of like, but just dispel some rumors because you always hear, you know, crazy stuff about, oh yeah, he threw a rope over the rafter up there and hung himself. And I mean, I, I'm right. sure you hear like crazy stuff that makes no sense at all. Right. So we, we're here to offer some of the um, historical facts and, and, and uh, some of the documentation to back that up. I really love the way you approach that, like that your first thing that you want to do is to prove it. Like, l all right, let's see what the cause could be and then go in. Yeah, exactly. And I don't ever want to make the spirit homeless, especially if it's not a bad one. But the people just aren't uncomfortable. So what I usually do is I banish it to like the mountains. I don't make it completely leave. The banish it to where I live and then they trickle down into the mountains and bang on my back door in the middle of the night. All right, don't do that anymore. <laughs> Let's well, fix that. Well, maybe we'll send it to the Great Salt Lake with all the salt. Someone told me to do that. Just send them somewhere nice, happy. Happy. Happy treat. Exactly. Yeah. We don't know if he's just standing here looking at all of us like you're stupid. We don't know if he doesn't even acknowledge us. We don't even know if he knows that we're here. Like, we have no idea. So when we do get interaction like that, we want to try and confirm it because one little blip is not really confirmation. So that's why I want to make sure that we have confirmation here. And then I could say, could you please some say something over here? And then Frank answer, if that is you, can you please light that device up? There's so many different ways for communication to happen, even though we can't hear or see them. So what is it about, about Union Station, history of Union Station, that, that appeals to you so much that you come down here and you do this? Um, so for me, I, you know, I've been doing this now for six years. Um, it's just a, it's a place that's very rich in history, not only to the local community, but to the state of Utah and also to the whole country. Um, this was the junction of the railroad back in its... Um, heyday and so this really is an important piece of our history so do you have are you just by word of mouth or do you have a website where people can website it's mysteries and legends pi.com um, we have Facebook and those are our two main things all of our events are listed on Facebook our website Eventbrite so oh that's so cool I would love to check you guys out and anyone else out there who wants to you know learn a little bit more about this go to their website thank you so much for telling us that yeah. I have been down here before, guys, and like Allie actually was the one wearing the necklace. We've been sitting down here in the dark, and we've, like, there's been, um, like, jewelry that she had on, and it was a necklace that had, like, a little bell. And we were sitting in the dark, and all of a sudden, all three of us that were sitting here heard her bell on her necklace moving. And so we were trying to figure out if it was a young female because that was kind of childlike. Because then we got that little giggle. We had a giggle too. as well, yes. So, as far as childlike, it could be maybe Francis or some of the other children that are claimed to be down here. Sorry. That like bad things happened down here, like they were slain or something. You know, I don't think that there's been anything like that going so on. So slain came through. It's just said no. Glenna. I just feel like something. Slain. They're trying to say Glenna may have been yes, because Glenna was killed. So if it, if that's her trying to speak on her behalf, Glenna, is that you? Please, I'm just looking for confirmation. Can you touch the green light for me? It'll just turn into other lights. You've probably made that work already tonight. Just get close to it, please. Thank you. All right. Okay, hey guys, let's head up. Well, so the most important question I have to ask you, because you've been around here for six years, um, have you had any, I don't even want to say like ghosts or seen ghosts, but have you had like any experiences that make you think, eh, what's up with that? Uh, there's been a few things that have made me stop and question, but can I prove that they're real or that they're paranormal? No, I cannot. Because they're not. So, I'm not going to say they're not, but I'm not going to say that they are either. So, Just odd things happening. Yeah. Yeah, this building definitely has a personality of its own. Yeah, for sure. It's been around here a long time, and so, I mean, it's bound to get, if, if nothing else, character, personality, like you said, right? Absolutely. 
Yep. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate your time. Have a great night. So you're part of like, I want this hat so bad. I'm, <laughs> I can't even. So we're even. paranormal you. The you kind of stands for whatever you would like. It's you, understanding, um, anything like that. So we just kind of keep it open. Your teachers. Uh, yes. You're teaching we take me people right now. out. We uh, actually show them how to use the equipment, kind of encourage them to participate, ask questions, kind of, we love when skeptics come and then we're like, hey, you know, can you say your name? And then all of a sudden they'll hear their name and then they're like full blown, you know, like there's something there or whatever. So um, I'm a skeptic. I Feral's try. A skeptic. It, it's good to be a skeptic. Yeah. This is bad cop. We, we, we call it Feral bad no, cop. No, I believe awesome. it. I, I'm, I'm with you. You always okay. need to have yeah. a skeptic. We always say that, you know, if you, something can only be a coincidence so often, and then it's not anymore. So that's kind of where we're at, and we kind of look for. One day, there was a janitor who was coming up to do his rounds, because at the end of the night, they have to make sure that everything's locked up, because certain alarms will sound if the doors aren't shut. So he's coming up to do his rounds, make sure everything's taken care of, and right here, where you and I are standing, <laughs> is the lady in white. And she is floating here. <clears throat> Excuse me floating here in the corner, looking at him. And he's just looking at her like, whoa. And then she tries to speak to him. He clearly can see that she's trying to speak. She's moving, her mouth is moving, she's saying something, she's almost like, I don't know if she's pleading to him or whatnot, but he's like, I cannot hear you, what are you saying? Please speak up. I don't know what you need, what do you mean? What, ha, ha. And then she's gone, right here. Can I get your names? Amy. I'm Meredith. And what is it you guys are doing down here today? We are volunteering um, at the photo booth, which is being set up right now. Uh, I don't know what else you want to know besides that. <laughs> what the photo booth being set up, what is it that they're, uh, I mean, they're taking photographs of people, obviously. But what is it for? Is it just for, like, souvenir photos or? Yeah, it is. So we have all these, like, kind of scary, fun Halloween props. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah, they're free, and then if you would like a magnetic frame, then those are going to be separate for $3. But other than that, you can get your photo taken for free with whatever prop you want. You know, when people are like, hey, I have something, we analyze it over and over and over again to disprove it. And then when we can't disprove it, then we're like, it, it's got to be something else. So it's kind of so where we are at. What have you seen in your investigation? What have you seen that like um, you can't you can't explain? Because I know I know you can't say you saw a ghost because you have to. Okay, I've actually color? seen. Yeah, so what's the weirdest thing you've ever so encountered? Two things. One, Asylum Forty Nine. There was a little hallway before when they had the um, the nursing home there. There was doors you couldn't go in. They had paper over the windows. Four of us were sitting there. We're looking through, trying to see if we can see any old people walking around or whatever. Two of them walk to the end of the hall. They go right. I turn around, I see somebody go left. I'm like, they're not supposed to be here. Run up to the end of the hall, there's nobody to the left. Couldn't explain it, I don't know what it is. A lot of times when we're in this hallway, we will look that way and see shadow. When we're down at that end, we see shadow over here. So it's almost like they're just being a little bit elusive. Um, but again, we are trying to talk to the lady in white when we're up here. There may be some children that play up here, but again, the lady in white. So if they, yes. is she saying yes? Okay. Yes. Let's go this way and see if we can contact her. So some people can go on the tours and then make their mom mad because they had a picture taken with a severed leg or something. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's what we're here for. What Whatever is going to irk mom a little bit. That's perfect. So do you guys do this at a lot of places? Is this the first thing? Is it a business? Um, so no, we're just volunteering. I happen to know the woman that organizes this. Her nephew is in my class. I'm a teacher. And so wow. I know her from that. You know Jenny? Yes. Me I'm too. I know Jenny. Hey. And the other time is at Benson Grist Mill. Um, you go in and there's the mill stuff is all in the middle and you can go to the right and go downstairs or to the left and upstairs. Every time I've been there, I've always gone downstairs. Sitting there one day, my wife was downstairs. She likes to kind of hang out afterwards and be by herself for a few minutes. So I'm sitting there on a bench. I see a guy. He's wearing a white shirt. He's got puffy sleeves. He's got an apron on, a little hat on. I see him He's walk. Like, Bonjour. <laughs> no. I see him walk. He walks and he goes downstairs. And I'm like, what did I just see? I'm like, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. My wife comes up. We're like, all right, let's go upstairs. We turn around the corner and on display, they have the exact uniform sitting there of what they wore when they were at the mill. Back in 1928, we talked about the fire, right? That fire that ended up 
causing the clock tower to fall, started right here. This was the portion of the Union Station that used to be a hotel. So that might kind of speak to the way the doors are against the, the wall there. It might look like hotel rooms, okay? This was the place where the porter was ironing his pants and forgot about them. So they started on fire. Again, no one died in the fire, but it did cause the ultimate problem that ended up killing Mr. Yenser. Now, at the end of the room over there is a mirror. Apparently it's some kind of a magic mirror. I don't believe that for a second, but people will tell me that they'll go down there and take pictures of themselves and that something will be in the reflection when they look at their picture. I double dog dare you to go give it a go. If anybody finds something in their photo, I really would love to see it because I don't think it's true, but might as well give it a, give it a try. Look at all of them go. So I just asked them if they needed any help with this and then I roped Meredith. We just kind of got ourselves in if they needed help. So we're just here volunteering. This is our first time. And now you regret it. Now you're like, I shouldn't have come at all. No, it's good people watching. Yeah. It's it, really good. It is good, yeah. Yeah, but you work at a school. I mean, oh. that can't get any more interesting than that, seriously. Uh, it's a different kind of interesting. It's adult <laughs> interesting, not like adult themes. Because they don't realize what they're doing. Huh? You're like, oh, child, you can't do that. Yeah, you're like, oh. <laughs> Your brain's not fully developed. Okay, you well, have an excuse. Oh, I should use that as an excuse because there's people that think mine's not fully developed. No, but it is. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I have no excuse. Alrighty, guys, well, thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. If someone is out there and they want to do something like this and they're too scared or whatever, where can they go to find, like, maybe a website or an email that they um, could write to behind? Most of the groups that do it were all on Facebook. So if you just type in, Ours is Paranormal U. Uh, I can't remember if it's underscore U or if just type in Paranormal U, you can find us. Um, and we're linked to all the other sites, all the other groups, and we usually post everything when we're having events. And uh, sometimes there's a small cost because we have to rent the place. Of course. But most of the time, we try. Everybody tries to keep it as minimal as possible uh -huh. so that we can kind of let people experience what's going on. That's pretty incredible. Is that you, Lady in White? Are you trying to talk to us through that device? Can you? Say something. Can you say hello to to us, please? Let me know if she says hello. So, again, the story is that she's coming to an event. She loses her life in a car accident outside the station. We have absolutely zero historical facts or information to say that that's true. We have no woman that's died outside of the uh, died outside of the station in a car accident. We don't have anyone by the name of Sarah. Now they have given her the name Sarah through a psychic medium and I don't know if that's true or not. We have no real clue. Bridger, ask her if she'll tell us her name through that. Will you tell us your name? We've been trying for a very long time to get her real name and if she says Glenna Carter I would be very happy to hear that because that's who I suspected. But she hasn't ever given us her name, and it's a little frustrating because you come here and you get some interaction, but she ever, she won't reveal herself, and I don't know why. Can I get your name? My name is Abby Levine. And you are here with uh, Paranormal, what is it, PI Utah, right? Yeah, Pit U, Paranormal Investigations Team of Utah. Very good. And I see you have a glow necklace on. I do. What is the significance of a glow necklace? Because I know like when you go to haunted houses, if you wear a glow necklace, people can grab you. Yeah. Is that so the ghost can grab you? Is that what that's for? Or? Yeah, absolutely. No, just kidding. <laughs> just means that I'm a member of the team, kind of signifies me as being, you know, person you can talk to about all this stuff. Come ask your questions. I'm happy to answer them. First of all, tell me what you do exactly. Okay, I'm a psychic medium. Okay. Okay, so I talk about, tell you about your past, present, future, whatever you want to know. You know, I connect with loved ones on the other side if they want to come through. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of scared. I'm um, I can I'm tell you're kind of scared. Oh my gosh, you are very nervous. Uh-huh. Braden, will you come here for a minute? He's right here. Okay. So, Braden, what I want you to do, who has the K2, the ones with the light on it? I'm going to borrow that from you, bud, for just a sec. Thank you. I want you to hold on to this. You're going to have to put something here. Here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is try and contact the woman named Sarah or the lady in white, okay? Now the men in the room, I need to have you pay special attention because when we start calling out to her, she will very often touch men on the side of the head, on top of the head, on the shoulder. Not me. How do you feel about that, Sarah? Okay, that's the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, it will, it will go off. 
Okay, so Graydon, what I would like you to do is to see if Sarah is here. Just say, that's our microphone, so that might be a little hard. So just say, are you here, Sarah? If you are, can you please come and touch the green light? Are you here, Sarah? If you are, please come and touch the green light. Sarah, if you're here, please come and touch the green light. Now, last night when we were doing this, I had a, I'm sorry, last night when we were doing this, I had a security guard, and he was actually standing behind me. So this is a little false because of this thing is going off. So he was standing behind me, and I was telling the story of Sarah and touching men, and all of a sudden, he literally just jumped up and started to take off out the room. And I'm like, dude, where are you, what are you doing? Where are you going? He's like, okay, Jane, I swear, I felt like I just got touched. And he had never been here. He had never had any experiences here before. He didn't even know what the story was about. So it was interesting to me that he had an experience and had never even heard about this place. So again, Braden, let's have you ask one more time in your own way. Ask her if she wants to dance or if she wants to hang out with you. That's us. Sarah, do you want to dance or play around? That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. The <laughs> Come on, Brayden. Be more creative than that, will you? I didn't work in high school. It's not going to work You're like an information booth of the paranormal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how long have you been with, uh, with the team? So I'm the newbie. I'm still in training. Um, I actually just started with them. We can't come to you for questions <laughs> if you're new. So I'm new with the team, but I've been into oh, the paranormal okay, for a long okay. time. Um, so I actually met up with them because uh, my senior project at the University of Utah was actually all about the paranormal. Mm -hmm. So that's how I found them. And then I kind of went once with them and never left. So now you're just hanging out. So how long are you considered a newbie until you're like a member? Uh, until the next newbie comes along. Oh, really? <laughs> so you're at the, until somebody else and then I see. So what would you like to know? Um, anything. Um, you just tell me. I anything. Okay. Now, even though we are calling out to her, she may go around the room and talk to someone else or touch someone else. So, if anybody feels something, please let me know. Is she kind of a groper. Yeah. Oh, that was a microphone. Did you feel something? No. It's important because you want her to, is that yes. what you're saying? Hey, hey Sarah, if that's your name, come on over here. Okay. Now the other possibility there are Okay, so I didn't do that. Did you do that? I don't know how I would have done it. Well, I'm just saying because the microphone, if oh, you didn't move well, it, did you? No, I didn't no. move it. And you didn't move yours? It might have been me. Bring it bring that closer to me. Not you. Okay, see that's No. No. Okay, so that may have actually been something that she was answering you. She's because that was not me and that was not you. That was not me. Ask, Sarah, is that you, please? Can you touch the green light one more time just to, just to acknowledge that that was you? She doesn't love women, to be honest with you. She, she, I don't know if she just doesn't trust other women or what the problem is, but a lot of well, times when I'm up here <laughs> investigating, shut up. And, I know oh, it just, it just moved. Okay, she doesn't like women. Okay. She doesn't like women. And, 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 that, and you know what? That's not unusual. Sometimes women will only have conversations with men because they don't trust other women or they're jealous of other women. Or just women. went off again. Yeah. Okay, so Sarah, are we talking, if that, if that is your name, are we talking about you? Are you, you don't love, okay. I've been talking to Glenna a lot and she's been responding a lot when I say the word Glenna. Okay. That's only interesting to me because I do suspect that it's Glenna, but she is very, very elusive. She, is she a liar too? No, I don't think she's a liar. Why would she lie? Well, she's, she's pretending a woman. like she's Sarah. No, I don't think that she realizes <laughs> no, that, you know, no, we're pretending like she's Sarah. She just turned off. Oh, so she just said, F you. That's what she said to you. <laughs> nice job, Raiden. Gosh, oh, great. Oh, you ask great. her to dance and then you call her a liar. Yeah, Ooh, see, now she's really mad at you. <laughs> oh, Sarah, do you want to dance? Sarah, do you want to dance, please? Just touch the green one. Okay. Oh, you better start dancing. Oh. oh. <laughs> Just so you know, time's up. Okay. Sarah, touch me if you want to dance. I don't want to ask. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I was going to say, I don't think he wants no. to that. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, we have to vacate. we got to move on. Let's go this way. Thank you if you did talk to us. I appreciate that interaction. Well, you got to recruit some people then so you're not at the bottom of the list anymore yeah absolutely come on out if you're interested come see us we'd love to chat with you so what is what is it about the paranormal that appeals to you what is it that makes you want to go do these kinds of things 
It's a combination of things. Um, first, it really interests me. Um, it's it's cool. It's different. It's something that's not a part of the everyday. Um, but I'm also terrified of it a little bit. So there's no such thing as ghosts. You're okay. <laughs> there's no such thing. Exactly right. So it's part facing my fears, part you know intriguing that part of me that's really interested in it. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So you're really cheery right now, but you're going through something, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not so cheery. And you want everybody to know this? Are you sure? Okay. But now you're going to cry. Okay. Over there in the ladies' potty, we have a gentleman that we like to call Mr. Boots. He is a guy that will tend to be in the restroom with women and we don't know why it's in the women's bathroom but sometimes women will go in there and hear the toilet uh, po the paper roll being moved the door being moved um, sometimes the water has come on in there but mostly they will look under the stall and see these men's boots in the next stall they're like okay either I'm in the wrong place or you are all right can I get your name it is Carter Reed and what is it exactly that you draw zombies yes uh, we do a comic called uh, the zombination.com uh, follows a bunch of zombie slackers during the zombie apocalypse. It, uh, every zombie movie has a 15 minute window where everything's going to crap, but things haven't uh, gotten all boring and we're waiting for people to die. My comic lives in that 15 minute window forever. So nobody dies, everything's just starting to go nobody down. They now. die, but there's always a steady supply of people who are going to get killed and uh, it follows the zombies, so uh, it's way less uh, uh, boring than The Walking Dead. Oh, well, there we go. I'm almost afraid just to talk about it, honey, right now, with everything going on. Because I know you're going to cry, because you're starting to cry right now. <laughs> is, is, do you want everybody to see this? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Okay, did you lose somebody recently? About five years ago, I lost my mom. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're... And that's what he want to hear from, mm -hmm. right? Because I can tell. So this is where I had my personal experience was right here in this hallway. This is the only time that I've ever felt touched and um, that I can't explain. So I was in this hallway and I felt something come up right behind me and touch me right up, like right up the, my head. And I was like, whoa, exactly. I got the heebies and I was like, what is going on? Couldn't figure it out. Still to this day, can't figure it out. I've never had that happen again to me in this place. So, Mr. Boots, if that's you, I do need you to knock really hard on the wall before we leave just to say goodbye to us. Knock on the wall or say goodbye to us on the device. Well, at least we tried. I don't know why he's in the ladies. Why are you in the ladies' potty? I'm wondering if sometimes, you know, as things change over time, maybe it wasn't the ladies' potty at that time. Maybe he recognizes it as something else and thinks that that's okay to be there or something. Well, you could just be a creep. Maybe we're assuming his gender. Maybe. thought. <laughs> 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 Maybe she wears boots. <laughs> Maybe she does. Maybe we're wrong about everything. Yeah, huh? What is it? What is it about zombies? What What's the deal with zombies? It seems like the last few years that's been the thing. Well, for me, it's like uh, zombies are like the ultimate add-on. You can add them to pretty much any fandom you like. If you like football, zombie football is way better. If you like, uh, you know, cops and robber shows, zombie cops and robbers would be way better. So it's like one of those things. It's like uh, icing on the cake for me. Now, the other night, were you thinking of her? Were you talking to her the other night? Mm -hmm. Okay, because she was listening to you. She was there. Okay, I want you to know that she's always with you. Okay? And she's, I mean, you know when she's around sometimes, but sometimes you don't. And when you're talking to her, I want you to talk to her more, you know? And pay attention. Okay? Pay attention you know, when you are talking to her because you'll feel her. On December 31st, 1944, there was a train, there were actually three train cars that were involved and they were leaving, two of them were leaving from the station here and one was gonna connect with them coming from Chicago. They were all headed to San Francisco. The first car I believe was an engineer car. The second car, sorry, and not just a car, it was an actual train. The second train was a passenger train and the third one were mail, car, mail cars. And the first one was headed out. It was a super, super foggy night to the point where you like can't even see in front of your face, kind of foggy. 
I see you got some sketches that you've been doing. Did you do all the artwork in the books too? Oh, yep, absolutely. This is me working on uh, Monday's comic. Uh, this one will be up, and it's uh, this one's a true tale of the cartoonist where it's just uh, something I did at a con and uh, try to find the humor in everything that I do. Monday's comic, you put one out every week, every day? Yeah, I've been on hiatus for a while, but uh, now that my uh, schedule slowed up, I'm uh, able to start doing comics again and uh, start my business uh, going crazy. Okay, so can you real quick tell us uh, where we can find you on Facebook and then yes. a way to reach you any other way? Well, yes, you can reach me on Facebook at Serenity Moore or give me a call. Which phone number? 706-877-8208. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. We appreciate your time. So the first one out and uh, at the, about the loose and cut off, it started to have problems. And so it had to slow down and, and stop. So it was so foggy that, you know, they were in the back trying to signal the next car because they don't have the communication back then that, you know, that we have now. So they're trying to signal the next car. Hey, man, we're stopped. We're slow down. You got to stop. You know, you got to slow down. You got to stop. So the passenger car train did see the signal and they started to slow and they started to slow. The third one, however, the, with the mail cars did not did not know it, came full speed. The engineer of that car, they do believe, had a heart attack or a stroke and died before impact. The engineer, or sorry, the fire, the fireman on the train was able to jump clear. But those mail cars rammed into the passenger car, which of course did the ripple effect and kind of went forward. Um, 79 people were injured, 48 to 50, 50 people were killed, and I'm emotional about this story right now because actually Bill, who is behind our camera, his family, a lot of them, gosh, this is crazy, were on that train. So um, he lost a lot of family members that day. Gosh, this is weird. I've never been emotional about this before. Isn't that crazy? It's all because of you. Where, where can somebody find your, your books or find your um, comics out if they wanted to look into them? Uh, go to thezombienation.com. you got to put the in front of it because otherwise you end up with a really crappy band. And uh, one day I will have that URL, but I'm going to have to travel, get a big sack and a hammer. And uh, then I'll have it. So Sorry to interrupt. The Zombie Nation. Mayday, mayday. Why? Why? Why, why? Because what? it's awesome. <laughs> why not? Is that an owl or is that a... Why did you make this? I need this in my life. Like, oh, your booth, I, I haven't even been in this interview because I'm over here drooling and dying. Oh, because I have his candy. I'm, I'm trying to make basically adult crack. You want it, and it's then you crack. gotta have it. Look at how cute. Imagine me, imagine me hiking with this. Right Don't get her bad side. It, can you turn that, like, can you make the lighting a little less harsh? Yes, Light. soft lighting, girl. Now. Setting up. I guess we're setting the mood. Should we start with a song? I can't sing. Yes, you can. What? Who told you? My mind. Oh, you met me at the bar one night, didn't you? <laughs> in, <laughs> in a past life, I did. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Well, I am with MNL Paranormal. You snuck me into an interview. I did? You did. How did I do that? I am a wily little, I'm like the oh, artful dog. Oh, I know. I'm you were just so pretty sitting over here in the corner in the light. Dick. <laughs> with your glow stick. Yeah, I thought like the rave was over here. You know, why not? Yeah, I'm here with MNL Paranormal. I'm one of the psychics on their team. Anyway. So, <clears throat> so when the wreck happened, so they did lose 48 to, 48 to 50 people. Some of them were Bill's family. Um, the rest were taken by hospital car. The dead were taken up to the Brigham City Hospital. The rest apparently were transported. Is everybody okay back there? Yeah. Okay. Um, the rest were transported to a, a local hospital or something um, on, in a different direction. I'm not quite sure what happened with that. Um, People who talk about the wreckage, it's very emotional for them because there's a lot of damage. Um, so cars like this, the medical cars, the hospital cars, actually saved people's lives because they were out there at the scene and they were transporting people so they could have lost a lot more than they did. It's a <laughs> fanny pack. No one, no one likes fanny packs anymore. I, mean. I like what? fanny packs, I think especially we have ones disagrees. that looks like this. And this is someone who actually watches. So if someone's staring at your fanny, you have something that will stare back. Oh, that's a it's good idea. Like, Indeed. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Sorry to interrupt. I like you, girlfriend. So you're having a good time here. I am enjoying myself. Have you seen anything spooky or paranormal? I see everything spooky. What? You're asking a psychic. Um, 
I have. Heard I just mean for the folks at home. <laughs> for the folks at home, this place is very active. I would for sure come out and investigate whenever you got the chance. And I just love old stuff, history, and I'm so intrigued by that painting. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on up there. Ooh, yeah, I noticed cool. that earlier. Yeah. What's going on up there? So yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting room. It is a very and the ambiance in here, of course. You got all the coolest people in Utah in this room right now. So what role did this hospital car play? Probably nothing in that situation. Um, but in its time, it did see a lot of things. They used to do surgeries on cars like this. They used to transport, like I said, the criminally insane. Who can, you can't imagine what the you know, war was like and coming back from the war and what they dealt with. And you know, passengers and, you know, so I can't believe I got so emotional. Gosh, Bill. Anyway. So that's what these um, cars were purposed for. And as far as the paranormal stuff, we really don't have a lot to go on. So if you're OK with it, I'm going to give like maybe two minutes to see if we can get any interaction from who we think may be a male in here. Who has the equipment? Where's the K2? You, well, obviously, Amy pointed out you make the uh, other zombie uh, we make zombie stuff. We make uh, Cthulhu stuff. We make uh, monsters. Um, basically, that, it's creepy and all sorts of stuff. Amy, he said they make Cthulhu stuff. Oh yeah, Cthulhu? this is the uh, this is the latest thing I made. Uh, I sculpted the original in Sculpey, made molds, cast it in resin, and now you too can share your love and worship with uh, dark elder gods who will eventually drive you insane and uh, kill you. So you know, wholesome. Yeah, wholesome. Cthulhu's real cute, but I don't want him to kill me. Oh, I thought Cthulhu was Amy's oh, favorite. Is... Wait, is this me or what? I'm just trying to find the right one. <laughs> Alrighty, Manuel, hey, thanks so much for talking to me. I appreciate it. No problem. I was glad to help. Stop by anytime. Thank you so much for letting us pin you down for yeah. a moment in time and being a good sport. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. You're gorgeous, and I'm so excited. On my good side. It's all good sides, right? It's good vibes for us. I know. Thank you. you have an awesome night. You too. Okay, so we're not going to do very much of this because it's actually time, and I go over time, and I get in trouble. So. <clears throat> Please, if there's a gentleman here, I know there's a lot of us here tonight, and I apologize for the crowd, but please, if you are here and you can at least acknowledge that you are present, can you touch the green light? It'll turn into more lights. It won't hurt you. You also can talk into that machine over there, and if you would like to say something, we're, we're listening. So I noticed it says Bear River uh, Paranormal. Bear River Paranormal. Can you kind of enlighten me a little bit? So we are based out of Cache Valley, Utah. Uh, basically, we do uh, residential investigations, but we can do commercial and urban legends, stuff like that. Okay. So you basically, if somebody thinks they have something in their house, you can come over and yeah. check it out. So we're here for the 1030 tour. Come on over to the lighted corner, corner of the lobby, and we'll get you checked in for your tour. Thanks for coming. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to you guys for being part of this. Because of you guys buying tickets tonight, we were able to save the night at the museum. Um, this wasn't going to happen. So you guys purchasing tickets actually helped us save it. So thank you so much for coming tonight. If you did have a personal experience or you'd like to talk a little bit more, I have a booth, the Paranormal Investigations Team of Utah, right over by where we entered. You're more than welcome to come and talk to us, talk about your stories. If you want to share what happened tonight, I'd, be, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more. And then I'd listen to the EVPs. So now that you hear the stories, you can put the voices to the, to the stories. Okay, does anyone have any questions, concerns, anything I can help you with before we go? Do you have a Facebook or anything like that? Yeah, well, it's just the PI team of Utah. If you put the PI, it'll pop up automatically on Facebook. So, Wonderful. yeah, yep. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. Thank Thanks you. So Absolutely, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Do you have a Facebook or YouTube channel yeah, or anything definitely. like that? We have Facebook, it's Bear River Paranormal. Our YouTube is Bear River Paranormal. Uh, our Instagram is at BR underscore paranormal. And our Twitter is BR underscore underscore paranormal as well. Okay, perfect. All right, man. Well, we'll have to check it out. I appreciate your time. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks so much. Yep, have a good one. Yep. I want to know if you guys were scared on your tour. First, you, Farrell. I, I was not scared. How could you not be scared? Um, we all know you're afraid of the dark. No, I'm not. Amy was scared for all of us. Okay. Um, I, I don't believe the word I would use to describe is scared. I wasn't scared. I felt 
the feels. I felt feels in different rooms, different feels in different room, rooms, but I wouldn't classify it as scared. Nauseous, maybe, but... I, I may have ruined it. I asked a ghost if she wanted to play with me. Yeah. Oh, was it Sarah in the old time yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. She's, Did I, she I dance feeling, with you? Sarah's kind of a freak, I think. No, Brayden's a freak. She, she is kind of freaky. She will sit on your lap. Oh, see, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, so I, definitely. What in the world? One thing I did get at my night at the museum was this beautiful friend. I, I don't like your friend. Why? She's so cute. What? She's punk rock. She's pretty creepy. Yeah, extreme, her. extremely creepy. Yeah. So, Union Station, night at the museum, great time, so, always a lot so of fun. So good. If you miss this year, you have to come next year. Not only, not only for the fact that that people are scary. If you're a history buff, this is the place to come. There's so much history. That's here. what it is. Like I'm obsessed with history. It's and, and you can make what you will of it. But do you have other things besides Night at the Museum where people can come and, and support uh, Union Station and keeping it so beautiful? Yeah, we have two art galleries, and all the sales from that support the foundation. Plus, just come to the museums. You know, for five dollars, you get to see four amazing world-class museums. Museums, the John and Browning Firearms Museum, the Utah State Railroad, the Cowboy Museum, and the amazing car collection. Yeah, so like even even for like you know empty-headed guys, there's cars and guns right here. <laughs> That's why Brayden likes I'm it. Back yeah. during the day, like it's it's really I'm not even kidding. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sold. I love this yeah. place. I'm so good. Thank you for having us. Yes, You're welcome. You. Yeah, we Thanks to everybody it. this year. Great year. Thanks for watching. Make sure you come check out Union yeah. Station. Especially PI team for reviving it. Yes. It. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Here we are with Jen's sister, and we've been trying to get dirt on Jen. Yeah, and we everybody, have. Yeah, and everybody claims there is none, but now <laughs> it seems there are some come to light. We, we've got some close quarters here. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. all right. We won't, we won't tell her. So the one thing that I've been thinking about since oh, I've been asked. I can't asked wait. <laughs> is when we were young, so you know the profession she's in, she's a paranormal investigator mm -hmm. in the dark, all that kind of thing. She was afraid of the dark. So... Yeah. How did that work then? She'd come into my room. <laughs> did you ever like throw her in like do in like in like the bathroom and shut the door and lock no, and stuff? No, actually, she would just come in, sneak in at night, and sleep with me, and kick me like so out she, of my bed. So she's a sissy then, really. All this paranormal is just a bunch of crap, right? Or, she, or maybe her fear's legitimate. Yeah, maybe the fear's legitimate. Uh, why are people afraid of the dark? You know what's in the dark? The same thing that's there in the light, void of light. It is, but I think everybody has that fear. I don't know. See, dark. I have to play good cop, bad cop here. And <laughs> I will say that I am much more secure when I feel freaked out with the lights on. Uh, well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, that was her. That was her thing. So, so Jenny's like, afraid of the this. dark. You know, I'm gonna go with it. She still is. Whether it's true or not, I'm gonna go with it. Well, you know what? I think some things probably would freak her out. <laughs> That's I think awesome. Some things would freak her out. So. Well, good. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Appreciate it.